This video is on electron configuration. Now the electron configuration is based off of the quantum mechanical model, or Schrodinger's model, of the atom, which is the model that we use today. It states that electrons are found in different orbitals, having different energy levels, and that an electron is found to be in those orbitals 90% of the time. This is based off of where the electrons are found and where the atom and element is found on the periodic table. The first thing you need to do is you want to color your periodic table into the different orbital sections, which we call blocks. Group 1 and 2, so groups starting with hydrogen and beryllium, make up your S block. Groups 3 through 8, which is groups of boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and helium, this half of the table here is your P block. In the middle, your transition element make up your D block, and your inner transition elements make up your F block. Your S block is the lowest energy, and your F block is the highest energy. We count energy levels, just like in the Bohr model, as periods going across the periodic table. S starting with number 1 and going down for each period. P starting with number 2, where there's boron going down. D starts with energy level number 3 where scandium is and F starts with energy level 4 where cerium is. Okay. Atomic orbitals that electrons are found in follow a pattern. The row of the periodic table is equal to the energy level just like in Bohr's model. The orbital is indicated by a lowercase letter S, P, D, or F. The number of electrons in an orbital is shown as an exponent raised above the energy, or excuse me, the orbital. We read in atomic number order left to right, and we'll go through some examples with the periodic table in a moment. You need to know that the orbitals have different shapes and can hold a different number of electrons. Our S orbital is a spherical shape and it can hold two electrons total. A P orbital has a shape that kind of looks like a flower, that looks like uh, Schrodinger's model of the atom, and it holds six electrons, one in each little orbital that it has. Your D orbital kind of looks like a four-leaf clover shape, except in um, multiple dimensions. It can hold ten electrons, and your F orbital is a very uh, different looking shape. There's a model of it in your textbook that you should take a look at and it can hold 14 electrons. Notice that my S orbital is the lowest energy and my F orbital is at the highest energy. When we write our electron configuration, like I said before, we start with the row of the periodic table, then our energy orbital, raise the number of electrons in that section. An example, as it's shown, would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, and we can keep going on and on. Notice that there are no commas in between, that my number of electrons in each orbital is raised like it is an exponent, and my energy level is a big number up front, also known as a coefficient. This pattern needs to be followed for all electron configurations. Next, when I walk you through many examples of electron configurations on the periodic table, you need to try to write down these electron configurations. Once I've gone through it, I will show a picture of what the electron configurations will look like. Here is our periodic table. We have our S block, which is your first two groups, make up the S block. Their of outermost shell electrons are in the S orbital. In the middle, we have our D block. All elements in this area here have electrons in the D orbital. On this side here is our P block. And then down here is our F block. Okay. 
Electron configurations are put into an order, into a pattern. Starting with hydrogen, here, we have 1s1. Helium fills our second electron, 1s2, for the s orbital. Lithium then is in our second row, so second energy level, which is 2s and 1, because there is one electron here. Beryllium would be 2s2, second energy level, s orbital, two electrons. Moving across to boron, we have 2p1, 2 for the second energy level, p because it's in the p block, 1 because it's the first electron in my p orbital. Carbon would be 2p2, again second energy level, p block, Second electron is in the p orbital. Nitrogen, 2p3. Oxygen, 2p4. Fluorine, 2p5. Neon, 2p6. Moving on to sodium, it's so in my third energy level. It has the highest electron is in the 3s1 location. Third energy level, s orbital, 1 for its first electron. Now when I look at something like sodium, not only does it have its outermost electron in the 3s1 location, but I know that because it's atomic number 11, it has an equal number of protons and neutrons, so it has 11 electrons as well as it does protons, and so all those 11 electrons are in their designated areas. So I have one in my spot for 3s1 here. And I also have electrons in all the rest of these locations are being shown within here. So it follows a pattern. Hydrogen has an electron configuration of 1s1. Helium has a configuration of 1s2 because I show that my s orbital is filled with two electrons. Lithium has an electron configuration of 1s1 and 2s, or excuse me, 1s2 and 2s1 for being here. Beryllium has four electrons. They fill 1s2, 2s, and 2 because it's the second one. Boron has an, an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, and 2p. One for the first electron in the p orbital. Carbon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2 for the second electron. Nitrogen, 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Fluorine, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. And neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Notice that I'm at the end if my noble gas is here, and all of my orbitals are completely filled with the electrons. All of the numbers, my excellent numbers, add up to the number of electrons I should have in my total electrons in my orbitals. Okay. What about something like phosphorus? What would its electron configuration be? Well, it has. My first electron, my first energy level, which is my ones, so these are filled, my helium and hydrogen, so that's 1s2. My second energy level is filled, which is 2s2 and 2p6. Then I have 3s2 for sodium and magnesium, and then 3p1, 2, and 3. So its final electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. Three. Notice that my S block starts by number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, just like my periodic table. That is my lowest electron energy state. That is my P block, which is numbers 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and then 7. Then comes my D block. This is numbered 3, 4, 5. 5 and 6, and then my F block is numbered 4 and 5. Okay? 
So what about something like gallium here? Well, every electron is filled prior to this point, so I just start listing off of my periodic table the different points that I have. I have my first energy level filled, which is my 1s2. My second energy level is my 2s2, 2p6. Then my third energy level is my 3s2, 3p6. Fourth energy level, 4s2. But then my d block starts at number 3. So this is 3d10 for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, and then gallium is in 4p1, because this is the 2, 3, 4th energy level of the p block with one electron in it. Then, what if I did something like nickel? Okay. Here, I have my first energy level is full, 1s2, then lithium and beryllium, that's 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. So all you do is follow your pattern, moving across your periodic table with your s block, your p block, d block, and f block, always continuing up the numbers as you're adding electrons. These are the electron configurations for the elements that we previously talked about with the periodic table. For hydrogen, it's in the first energy level in the s orbital and has one electron. Notice that the number that is written in the superscript is equal to the number of electrons. Here, the number of electrons in the outermost shell in the highest energy level is equal to 1. These are my valence electrons, or the electrons at the outermost energy level. Helium is 1s2. There are two total electrons, as seen here, two valence electrons. Lithium, 1s2, 2s1. There are three total electrons here. There is one valence electron, one electron in the highest energy orbital. Beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. Four total electrons. Notice that the electrons is equal to the number of protons in a neutral atom. Two and two makes four. And there are two valence electrons illustrated by the two in the highest energy orbital of 2s. It's a higher energy orbital than 1s because it's in the second energy level. And my s is, at, is the only energy orbital available. Boron is 1s2, 2s2, 2p1. There's five total electrons, 2 plus 2 plus 1. And there are three valence electrons as seen with the 2 here and the 2 here. My highest energy level includes all orbitals in my second energy level. So my electrons in the 2s and my one electron in the 2p. Carbon is 1s2, 2s2. 2p2. There's six total electrons, 2, 4, 6. Four valence electrons with the two electrons in the 2s plus the two electrons in the 2p. Nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3 with seven total electrons, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7. And five valence electrons, 2 plus 3 in the highest energy orbital or the highest energy level. Oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, it makes 8 total electrons, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 6 valence electrons, 2 in the s and 4 in the p, 4 plus 2 is 6. Again, these are the number of electrons in the highest energy level. Fluorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. There are 9 total electrons, 2, 4 plus 5 is 9 and seven valence electrons, two in the s, five in the p, all in the second energy level. Neon is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 10 electrons, 2, 4, plus 6 is 10, and eight valence electrons. Highest energy level is energy level 2. There are two electrons in the s, six in the p, 2 plus 6 is 8. 
Notice that my highest energy level here is completely full. My S has both of its, and my P has all six. When it's completely full, this tells us that all our electrons are paired. They all orbitals have electrons in them, and this signifies a noble gas. This is the most stable electron configuration. Sodium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. There are 11 electrons, 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 1 makes 11. And there is one valence electron as 3 is my highest energy level in the S, and there is one electron here. Continuing on with phosphorus, this is number 15. You should have got 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p3. My number of valence electrons is equal to 5, with the 2 in the s, third s orbital and the 3 in the third p orbital. My highest energy level is 3s and 3p, the third energy level. That tells me where my valence electrons are located. Gallium is number 31 and has the energy, or excuse me, electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1. My number of valence electrons are the electrons in my highest energy level, which you might have thought was 13, which is 2 plus 10 plus 1. In fact, it is 3 because we only count my electrons in my highest energy level, my energy level is 4, is my highest, so that's the 4s2 and the 4p1. So really, it's 2 plus 1, which is 3. These 3d electrons are at a higher energy level than my 4p, or excuse me, a lower energy level than my 4p electrons. Nickel, number 28, has electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d8. Again here, you might have thought that the number of valence electrons was 10 since these were our last orbitals. In fact, it is not 10, but rather it is 2 because my highest energy level is 4 and there are 2 electrons here. Now, not only can we have the highest energy level, but within that, we can have our highest energy orbital. Remember that my energy orbitals go from S to P to D, and then to F being the highest. What I did next is I located my highest energy orbital for each of my previous examples. The highest energy orbital for phosphorus is 3P, for gallium is 4P, and for nitrogen, or excuse me, nickel is 4S. In gallium, after 4p would come 4s and then 3d, as they go in order of orbital and then uh, energy level. This highest energy orbital is where electrons can be added or removed from to make ions. So they can be added to this highest energy orbital.